I hear the name Ichiramugo, what comes to mind is magnificence, amazing power, compassion, the ability to relate to other people, um, an intellect that always goes straight to the heart of the problem, but does so without leaving the heart behind. And also, when I think about Michere, I think about fearlessness and resilience and absolute strength. She is such an amazing woman. Um, I didn't meet Michere that many times, but the few times that I actually met her personally left such an impression on me. It was just some kind of aura, some kind of presence that she has. And, and the, uh, she, was old, she is older than me. And so I met her when I was on campus at the University of Zimbabwe. And I was in a, a drama club. And that drama club was led by the uh, Department of Theatre at the university. And Michere had had to leave Kenya in the mid 80s and had come there. And we were working on some agitprop, um, yeah, transformational theatre. I was actually studying psychology at the time, so I wasn't in the Department of Arts, so I didn't see her like every day. So Robert McLaren was leading this drama club, and he thought we needed some encouragement, I suppose. And so he said to us, well, I'm going to bring you some people from Kenya, and they're going to talk to you about the work that they had done in Kenya. So one day we were all so excited. And then he came with the people from Kenya, it was the late Ngugi Wamiri and Michere Mugo. And I was so shocked because I hadn't expected to see a woman as one of the people from Kenya who had come to the drama department. Because this was in the mid um, 80s, and that was shortly after Zimbabwe's independence. And so Zimbabwe was still in a very revolutionary way of doing things. And so they had offered asylum to people who were leaving Kenya at that time. And it simply had not occurred to me that one of the people would be a woman. So Michera came in and I realized that this great uh, theater practitioner that Robert had been speaking about was this woman, Michera Mugo. And she was so small. <laughs> and she just came in and stood there and she started talking to us and encouraging us about how to do things. And she just had this power about her and a way of speaking to you that made you think that, yes, you can do things. So Michere didn't know most of us in the drama club. It wasn't connected to the actual department. It was um, the whole community of the university, including workers and people from other departments. But the way she just opened up to us and showed us the skills and actually started singing with us, and it was just amazing, and, uh, and I was dumbstruck. Then again at... Uh, a university event she spoke again and uh, we hadn't really seen women standing up and speaking in public in Zimbabwe this was shortly after the war and all the people at the top were men so we hadn't seen women in that position so for me to see a young woman standing up and just talking and t being herself and presenting her ideas was amazing for me I hadn't seen it before and uh, I think that was one of the points where I thought that it's okay for a woman to have voice. It's okay for a woman to have personal power. And it's okay for a woman to show the world this. So that was very seminal for me in my development as a young woman then on campus. And I really look up to Michele for that because there were not many role models available. So after that, I left the university and I went to Berlin to study filmmaking. And I did that via London because there was um, an African literature event, a conference in England. And I had just published Nervous Conditions. This was in 1989. So I get to the conference and Michere is there. And, you know, I didn't know what was going on. It was my first novel. Um, I hadn't been exposed to that kind of scenario. So she just took me under the wing and made sure I was comfortable. 
And when she was on my panel, she just made sure that I could engage with everything. And she was like a cheerleader when I was there. So then um, I progressed to Berlin, but I did go home in between. And I remember seeing my dad had actually cut out um, an article from the newspaper because Michele was now writing for the newspapers then. And so she had written about that event in, in England and she had talked about how everybody had loved what I was doing and how brilliant I was and how, Z <laughs> how Zimbabwe should be so proud. And I was just thunderstruck because, you know, I hadn't seen anything like that going on. And I really thought, what an extraordinary woman. How many women create so much space and create a platform for other young women? You know, the norm is that somebody would feel threatened and not want to lift another woman up. So that's again when I realized that Michele was special. So she didn't even have to be there. I just saw this article and again, it was a, a profound moment for me. My confidence just took so many leaps and I realized that she was really somebody special. So then I went back to Germany again and I got this uh, communication from her asking me to go to a meeting on African women at the World Bank. She had remembered me <laughs> and had organized for, for me to fly over with a number of other African women. And uh, she sat me down and told me what all the issues were. I was in Germany, so this was around the time of uh, the neo-Nazism. And so the way we were engaging with her being of color in Germany was maybe a little bit different at that time. So she walked me through all the issues we were going to have to discuss. And so I had no idea that I was actually so angry. <laughs> so when we started discussing these issues, I realized, oh my goodness, I've got so much to say about all of this. So we started and it was also a Skype link up to somewhere else. And so I started talking and then suddenly I see Vichere writing out of the corner of my eye and then I get a note past me and she says, Sissy, not so loud. <laughs> and I, I thought this was so wonderful to have someone who's got my back, who's there to make sure that I'm always presenting my best self. So that was uh, another time where it was wonderful to be able to engage with her and to profit from her, her big experience and her love and her desire to see me grow. And I'm talking about these things uh, personally because that's how I know her. But I think it just is um, an illustration of the way she did things all together. You know, she was all about nurturing people and uh, bringing growth wherever she went. And so um, I hadn't seen her then again for a long time until I got an email from her where she asked me to engage with the book that she did on the conference on the late uh, Chinua Achebe. And then we started talking again. And that's uh, when she told me about what had happened in her life um, and all the difficulties that she had and how the university in Zimbabwe had really betrayed her and not allowed her to, to, to get the kind of tenure that she needed and she had had to leave the country. And she was doing all this with two young daughters, one who is now late. And, you know, it was just wonderful that she had continued. I knew her in the 1980s, the mid-1980s. Now we are reconnecting when she asked me to, to write a blurb for a book on Chinua Achebe. And I was just astonished by her consistency. No matter what came up against her, she was able to keep her vision. And um, we've been having some wonderful communication now. We're still in touch. <laughs>